I'm so excited to talk about this book series. I'm so excited, like so beyond excited. I love this book series so much. So have you ever wanted to read a book that was Middle Earth but in Victorian era? Have you ever wanted to read a book that was about learning about dragons but not in our world but also in our world but not? Have you ever wanted to read a book that's basically narrated by Maggie Smith? <laughs> Lady Trent has all these things and more. I, oh, I love this book series so much. It's so much fun and it brings me so much joy all around. It's such a fun read and it's different. I've never read a storyline quite like this from the way that it's told to the character development and the trials and tribulations they go through. It's so real and not real all at the same time. I think the plot of this book series is excellent. The characters are phenomenal and memorable and very realistic and relatable. Uh, the writing style, so much fun. And there's a lot of other fun kind of quirky things to it that I really enjoy as well. The full name of the series is A Memoir by Lady Trent. Then there are like five or six-ish books in the series depending on how you read the last one. Um, they're not super hard reads. They're very fun. I find them thoroughly enjoy it. You can't tell from me rambling about how much I enjoy them. So the premise of this series is Lady Trent, a world-renowned dragon naturalist, uh, essentially a person who studies dragons, is finally going back and writing her memoir, her life story of how she got to be Lady Trent. And before she was Lady Trent, she was just Isabella. Uh, and so the first book specifically really focuses on her early years in the beginning. I think she's like five, she's a kid. Um, and at the end of the book, she's like late 20s and it kind of skips over a certain period of her life depending on how relevant she feels it is. But we get to kind of see her become who she's going to be. And this really interesting way of writing it because we get to know Lady Trent, so to speak, so intimately because she's writing this. This is from her perspective. It's a little bit of second person and first person, so she'll address the reader sometimes as you do this or you must have heard this or frequent readers of mine will know that I did this. A lot of back and forth like that. Um, there's also first person of her retelling what's happened beforehand in her life. So a lot of back and forth nature like that and it's really fun. The arc of the first book follows her from about age five and some of her early years that it skips to what she feels the more relevant part of her life um, around when she's getting married. It's very Victorian style to me. It's, it feels as if Middle Earth had lived half a Victorian age and that's the type of world that this would be set in, except there's a lot more dragons than Tolkien had. The story is so unique. You deal with things you would think you would deal with a Victorian dragon-esque society um, and also things you wouldn't necessarily think you would deal with. Uh, it's such an interesting world building. There are things that are very reminiscent to modern day places and modern day terms but it's all its own. It takes place in its own world. Skirsland I think is pronounced. I'm probably gonna butcher all these names. I'm so sorry to the author Maria Brennan. I'm just I'm so sorry I'm gonna do my best. Um, but she lives in Skirsland and most of the books don't take place there. They take place on her adventures traveling to study these dragons. Um, she goes all over the world to these different landscapes. Once she's in a desert and another time she's in this green hell they call it and it's this Amazon-like place. I really like the way the story does the world building. Um, it doesn't really spoon feed you anything. She's writing it as if you are a reader in this world, as someone who, that follows her in this world. So you don't get any explanations or anything. You just kind of, okay, here it is. You probably heard of this, so here's the real story. And you go straight into it. And I really like that because it kind of just sweeps you right into everything. Um, it can be a little bit confusing though if you're not adept to picking up terminology fast. Like they have their own months, seasons, days, and holidays you are most likely able to kind of match it to its parallel in our world. Um, but the first time you're hearing it, it could be a little bit jarring. Uh, personally, I can, I think it's well done. I think it's enough to give you a pause like, oh, what is this? Um, and then you don't question after that. You just kind of keep going because characters keep going. They don't dwell on it. It's not a main part of the story. So I think that's really fun and it's so hard to put down. I will admit the first book has a few places where I don't think the pacing is as good as the rest particularly 
in the earlier section of the book, and I think it's kind of more purposely done, it's in the time of her life where she calls it the gray years. Um, and she thinks of this as times where she wasn't necessarily who she was. She was acting a part to please those around her and, and more or less just kind of like a depressed period of her life. Um, so for me, the pacing there wasn't quite as good, but I think all around it's a really well paced book. I love these characters so much. Lady Trent is narrating the books from a much older and wiser perspective than she is when these events are happening. So it's really interesting to get to know her in that sense, but also see her growth to that point. Isabella, she is, I love, I love her so much. She is an excellent female protagonist. She's not too feminine, but she's not unfeminine at the same time. I think it's a nice balance, especially for this time period it's set in. Um, she kind of just wants to do her own thing. And it's a really good struggle between her passion for studying dragons and the need to appease those around her. And it's a really well done balance between the two. Uh, but she's also very stubborn and not afraid to speak her mind in it gets her into a lot of trouble and it's so much fun but she's absolutely brilliant and it's so much fun watching her not only grow but also doing these scientific discoveries and her piecing things together i find it so much fun so i i think you're gonna love her just as much as i do i think her passion for dragons is the most infectious part of the story throughout the rest of the series there are some characters that are recurring some we meet and then they kind of become mentioned throughout the series it really does act like the arc, arc of her life where people kind of come in and out but they're key figures throughout. Um, one person we meet is her husband Juby and this happens really early in the book so I feel like this isn't a spoiler so if you don't want this spoiled I guess just skip ahead a little bit. Um, but Jacob, god I love Jacob. I love Jacob. God I wish every man in the world was like Jacob. I love the dynamic between him and her because you can tell he's a little uncomfortable with how much she wants to be in the field of dragon study yet at the same time he understands her and how much it means to her to do it and he's so wonderfully supportive one of my favorite moments in the book is they're sitting on like kind of a cliff side and she was begging to go because she wanted to see the dragon because they were hunting them to study them uh that's sounds really bad but basically they just needed one specimen to study so they had to unfortunately you know they're sitting there on that ledge and the moment the dragon comes she's just overcome and she thanks him so much for just letting her have this opportunity even though she kind of forced it into his plate she thanks him for going along with it and it's this really great line where she kind of talks about how like there's a dragon inside of her trying to come out and if it can't fly it's going to die and how supportive he is to that comment how receptive he is to it i just love this character and i think it's so well done and it's so much fun. another character we get to know really well is tom tom goes through such great character development and boy do i love character development um, but at first he's introduced as Isabella's rival of sort. Um, they're both in positions where they aren't really accepted into this scholarly field of dragon natural scientists. Uh, Isabella because she's a female and Tom because he wasn't born into the right family. He's not wealthy enough. He's not prominent enough. Um, so it kind of starts off interesting with them having kind of a headbutt relationship where they're at odds because they're both trying for that same uh, respect in this field. Uh, and then as the story goes on it kind of develops really nicely into really good friendship and Tom's around for a lot of the books and I thoroughly enjoy his character and watching him grow. Uh, it's just and they have just like a really good friendship between them all. It's really great and there are a bunch of other characters and it's such a really well developed world around it that I don't really feel like any of the characters are lacking. I just thoroughly enjoy seeing them all. So. The writing style must be my favorite thing about this series. It's just so cleverly done that it's a memoir, but it's fantasy, it's real, 
but it's fantastical and it's just a great blend. It's, I've, like I've said repeatedly, it's narrated by her and she's sassy, classy, and brilliant, and I love it. She has these really great, like, side remarks. Um, a lot of it's told with, like, little hints of foreshadowing, um, little lines of, uh, we were preparing to go on XYZ adventure, and we thought we were well prepared. Little did we know how ill-prepared we actually were. Normally, I'm not too crazy about those lines, but I love the way she does it, because you can just kind of hear her smacking herself in the head, like, you fool, you don't know what you're doing. Um, but also there's not a lot of regret to it. And I find it really fun. And she has a lot of throwaway lines of um, kind of talking about the gossip. There's a lot of gossip that kind of surrounds, not her, but her reputation, so to speak. So she isn't gossiping, but she's gossiped about. Um, a lot of her remarks specifically towards that are really funny. Um, She's like, as the news, as the papers have no doubt remarked about how scandalous my life is, little did I know how scandalous it actually is. Like things like that. And you're just like, ah, you get it. Like I said before, it's that Victorian-esque time. So there's a little bit of that language. So it's formal, but sassy at the same time. Really great. I, I keep explaining to people, like I feel like Maggie Smith is narrating this to me. And if it ever becomes a TV series, God, I hope Maggie Smith narrates it. That'd be just so good. I, I would die. It'd be fantastic. Uh, but all in all, there's a lot of other really fun quirks in this series. Like my copy of the books have the gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations in them. I mean, just, they're just so pretty. Like, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. The maps are also very well done too. So it's visually beautiful as much as it is written beautifully. Uh, so I like fun things like that. So I enjoy it. Pro of the pros book. Jacob. God, I love Jacob so much. He's literally on my list of pros for this book. Who hasn't won in a Victorian style world with dragons? I mean, come on. Isn't that what we all dream about growing up, right? 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 Also, it's super realistic. It deals with really great themes and the story doesn't go quite where you expect it to it like over the arch of a couple of the books not necessarily the first one i know i'm reviewing the first one but i mentioned this anyway um it deals a lot like with grief and she's her memoir unfortunately not everybody lives to see the end of her life she has older family and people and she's studying dragons for goodness sake so of course there's real danger of people not making it um so a lot of her dealing with that grief and uh, it's very real and well done. There's also, as the books go further in, there's an element of politics. So I know I just said it being Victorian society is a pro, but it's also a little bit of a con, at least in this first one for me. Um, with the Victorian society comes a lot of the societal expectation and restrictions that we're used to from that genre. And sometimes, as much as I love it, it's really aggravating. This first book, Isabella kind of doesn't take the lead yet and she's young and she's still learning so it's not the end of the world um but she kind of falls step from her husband and does things with her husband's permission and has to make her husband decide to take on this scientific endeavor she can't do it on her own he needs to come with her he needs to take her with him rather he needs to okay it um so at some point it gets a little aggravating because after a while you're just like come on really still I will say as the books go on the way she kind of combats this is so well done and I really love it um but in the first book I won't deny that I was a little frustrated by it at some point and intentionally frustrated because it's supposed to be frustrating for her as well it's just a little tiny little smidgen of a con for me the only thing that's a real con is if you're not used to fantasy some of the terminology can be a little bit hard to grasp. You're, like I said, you're really thrown in there and I love that and what it does for the pacing. It's a lot of terminology and if you're not used to things being thrown at you and just kind of have to go with it, it can be a little jarring and hard to keep up with what's actually happening because you're kind of a few steps back just adjusting to what they're talking about. Um, I, just the first book I ran into an issue with that, after that I really had no problem. I had a sense of what this world was about and uh, their kind of religions and their history in the world and where it was in relation to other places and it wasn't big an issue but this first book I'm gonna list it as a con because I think it can inhibit some people from reading. I really have no clue how I'm reviewing these so I'm just gonna make this up as I go along 
Um, the current sale I'm going to use is going to be a 0 to 10. Uh, 0 being don't read it. I will not recommend and I certainly won't reread it. 10 being I love this and I will recommend it and I will reread it until the day I die. 5 being kind of the marker where things get reread and recommended and so on and so forth. So that's the vague outline of a review I'm doing. Um, but for plot, 8. Characters, 8. Writing style, 9. Uh, prose, I'm gonna give it like a plus 3 in there, but con minus 2, so it'll just be a 1. So all in all, oh, and enjoyableness, 10. I almost forgot to count that in. I have a very different number, but this number feels better for it. Uh, that gives it a 9 out of 10 solidly. So yeah, that's my thought. This is about the first book. I want to talk about them each individually because I think there are some overarching commonalities between the books. I think they each deserve their own review. And plus, I just want to talk about them more. I love them. Seriously, it's so much fun. Go buy it. The first book is A Natural History of Dragons. The second book is Tropic of Serpents followed by the Basilisk, Basilisk, Voyage of the Basilisk, um, and I just recently finished uh, Labyrinth of Drakes, and there's like one or two more after that, and I'm very excited to read it, and I've loved seeing where her life's gone. Um, this review is specifically for the first book in the series, so look forward to more of that. And if you like me doing this, for some reason you like the way I ramble, um, let me know and I'll keep rambling, I guess. Yeah, thanks. Bye. I'm, a, I'm just gonna get some fun some fun bloopers, you know. Like, and I was like, no, true dragons. Ah, why am I tilting? There's five dragon. Ah, but uh, uh, okay, I guess I can't turn my phone doing stuff at the same time. Really well, me. First book is a natural history of dragons, followed by a tropic of serpents. Oh, ew, my things. Love, love, love them. It's I probably should have made my bed first. I'm gonna help. I feel like a dragon like that. God, I love this book so much. Um, so you can finally, it's, it's just like trying to kill them and falling cliff, death, politics. Uh. <laughs> I think uh, while there's some overarching commodities, commodities. While I, the full name of the series is A Memoir by Lady Trent, or Lady Trent, A Memoir by Lady Trent. <laughs> I hate myself so much. Why do I want to do this? Oh god. That it. Um, in this first book, Eliz <laughs> Elizabella. One of my favorite aspects of the series is Isabella, Lady Trent, narrow narrating what's happening as a much older and I, my eyes are what the hell? This is supposed to be dragons. I don't know what the hell this is. This book is uh, Natural History of Dragons. Then the next one after that is Tropic of Serpents. Yeah. Tropic of Serpents. Serpents. Tropic of Serpents. So, <laughs> this is gonna be awesome.